Welcome to Sports Econ 101, the show where we discuss sports topics from a business perspective. I'm your host, Edward Brown, along with my co-host, Russell Jackman and Mike McDowell. Uh, each trivia, excuse me, at each commercial break, we're going to ask a trivia question. And since we're still in the NBA finals, we have to have NBA questions, which is Russell's favorite topic. And uh, in the next segment, is, uh, you say that Michael, almost like it's sarcastic, but that is. So you got to talk, speak a little louder. What's that? You 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 sound like you're being sarcastic there. That is my favorite. No, topic. no, I I know it's your favorite. That's why that's why I like doing it. We always like to not only please our guests but please our co-hosts as well. Um, and in the next segment, uh, Michael has uh, invited a, a special guest, very uh, very interesting person. Uh, I was reading his bio, and we'll let Michael do that in the next segment. Uh, also, if we have time, talk about the uh, fact. Maybe that now we got about thirty five seconds. Caitlin Clark, what do you think about her written? Getting snubbed <laughs> by the Olymp for the Olympics. I, I mean, she just joined the the WNBA. Hey, are we getting paid by Caitlin Clark? To we, we, all we do is talk about Caitlin Clark. <laughs> I mean, well, good Lord true. Almighty! You know what? The WNBA better be thinking their bottom whatever you want to call it dollars. dollars. Caitlin Clark is the reason we are talking about the WNBA. It is yeah. a joke. I mean, thank God for this young lady. People can chastise her. They can kick her off the Olympic team, whatever. But I'm telling you, the only reason I'm talking about the WNBA or any of us is because of Caitlin Clark. And, and also when it gets to the Olympics, you know, what's I mean? Well, when... yeah, I mean, she gets yeah. she gets snubbed allegedly. I mean, first of all, you have to earn that position. But quite frankly, for the, for the sake of the sport, she should be on that team. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, that, I yeah. don't know. I mean, it, uh, what do you think, Russell? Um, yeah, I, for marketing reasons, obviously, yeah. they've got the spots. You know, you're telling me. In, in other words, I guess the question would be: Could you name the 15th member of the uh, women's Olympic team? No, in fact, Brittany Griner thinks is the only one. Hey, guys, we got to cut to our break, and then when we come back, we're going to introduce our guest. Stay with us, Sports Econ 101. We'll be right back. Don't touch that dial. Welcome back to Sports Ecom 101, Edward Brown, along with Mike McDowd and Russell Jackman. And sorry, Russell, I had to cut you off there, but uh, you were continuing continue on about uh, Caitlin Clark and uh, the Olympics. Well, and my, my point was, if you don't even know who the 15th member of the women's Olympic team is, you're not going to really miss that person if that, that lady was not there on the uh, squad, as opposed to Caitlin Clark. Everyone knows who she is. So... I, yeah. it's, it is weird that the Olympic team that, you know, the, normally the United States Olympic teams, they think totally of the marketing and the publicity element of it. You look at the dream team, for example, you yeah. know, or even the men's basketball team, they wouldn't leave off. I mean, they, they've got LeBron on it this time. They wouldn't leave LeBron off of it, you know, to, to somehow make room for, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, like uh, someone oh, like someone else. Oh, wait. Well, here's here's my question: Is I, I don't know, I, I don't know the, the other women um, players. Uh, forget the marketing side of it. Is she is she good enough to beat out all those other women? That's my that's that's my main question. I wouldn't leave the marketing side out of it. You know, the Olympics is about marketing. It's been more about marketing yeah. since the dream. Uh, that's a second, that is that is another part of it. But 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 here's my but again, I, I don't know enough about these women to to make a judgment as to oh yeah, she's better than this player or not as good as this player because she's she's mostly known for her her offense. But uh, um, tell you what, we, our our guest has been uh, uh, sitting here waiting patiently. Yeah, really. So let's get into it. Okay, Mike. Well, you since you invited him, go ahead and introduce him. Well, he's, he's a very controversial figure, um, and I'm, I'm a little worried about him. Uh, you know, he's kind of like the Jerry Jones of uh, professional uh, football. Um, <laughs> he's looking at me like, well, what, what the heck is this guy going to say? <laughs> no, well, our, our special guest, uh, his name is Nick Furis. Nick is a guy who I happen to know. In fact, Nick said, well, is it okay if we say that we know each other? I said, absolutely, Nick. Uh, Nick is a great, is an interesting guy from Jacksonville, Florida. Not originally, but lives and I, I'm I too am in Jacksonville, and our paths cross each other because of the broadcast business and, and so forth. But Nick is um, proudly the co co-owner of 
a team called the Jacksonville Sharks Indoor Arena Football League. Of course, you know, you got the NFL, the, the NBA, the NHL, MLB. What's really interesting, what takes place behind the scenes of a indoor football league? I mean, it's a vibrant league. Nick's going to tell us about it. Uh, Nick is also the uh, owner, an Emmy Award-winning uh, producer, director, uh, from a company called Spectrum Films. He's multi-talented. Nick, we thank you. Uh, I, the reason I wanted to say you're controversial because I know you love your wife, your children, your grandchildren. You love God and America. So that makes you controversial. <laughs> That's okay. I, I, I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that, Mike. I'll take that. I'm teasing. You know I'm teasing you. I know. Uh, I, Nick, know you. Now, uh, I remember when Arena Football came out, is this part of that specific? Um, uh, the original, the, the original AFL, the yeah. Kurt Warner, Kurt Warner yeah. AFL, uh, yeah. that league folded. Okay. Folded. okay. That league folded. And uh, we were part of it. Our inaugural season was in 2010. The Jacksonville Sharks were formed in 2010. And one year later in 2011, we won the um, AFL championship. So uh, that was that was quite the story, and it was new to Jacksonville. It was exciting. There was thirteen thousand people at, at the arena every night. I, I happened to be a fan back then, uh, watching this interesting game. Um, people may remember a quarterback named Aaron Garcia. Aaron Garcia is out from the West Coast, Hall of Fame indoor quarterback, unbelievable talent. Um, so he played for us. Uh, subsequent to that league folding, um, there was a new league formed, the National Arena League, the NAL. And um, we won a championship in 17. Um, then I became an owner, I believe, in, uh, in the 19, 2019 year. We won a championship in 2019, and we won one last year in the NAL. So four-time champions. Uh, since I joined the ownership group, and there's seven of us, um, I've got two rings, so it's kind of exciting. Um, yeah. uh, Do you have your ring dad, on, Nick? Huh? You don't have your ring? You don't have your ring on? You know what? They're, they're, they're so big. <laughs> they're so big, and, and, and I usually wear them very rarely. I probably wear them twice a year, um, <laughs> if that. But um, you wear it around your neck. Yeah, you know? exactly. It's kind of yeah. neat to have. Uh, but Mike, Mike said in his introduction, what goes into a professional football team? We now are no longer part of the NAL. This year, we're part of the Indoor Football League, the IFL. Um, oh. Your listeners can go to um, goifl.com. Um, it is a nationwide footprint. It's a very strong league. There's 16 teams oh. from... California to Massachusetts, uh, in the Midwest, uh, you know, Iowa, uh, Wisconsin, down in Texas. And so, right so here is the other league, uh, is it like a competing league then? So the NAL still exists. Mm -hmm. We we did leave that league. We just felt that th we had an opportunity to go into a, a stronger league, one that was very established, one what one that we felt was being run by the commissioner very well. So you have 16 teams. It's nationwide. You're expanding by two next year, makes it 18. And we're looking for international play, whether that be Mexico, whether that be Canada. So uh, I think the game itself is a little bit different than what we came from in rules and the type of athletes we need in order to succeed. Uh, this year rather than last year where we won a championship and we learned that the hard way. Um, it took us five, six games this year to realize the schemes, the personnel, et cetera, that we had were not adapting correctly to this league. We fixed those problems and now we're, we, you know, we're doing a lot better. So it's a little humbling to win a championship and then not be able to win a game for a while, but now we're starting to catch on. So you go from a, a, a championship season to currently we're, uh, I believe, two and eight. We're two and eight this year, uh, and, but that's okay. The wonderful thing about it is we still have 
you know, eight, 9,000 people at the arena because it's an experience. It's professional football mixed in with an interactive experience where the fans and there's activities on the field in breaks. So you really have affordable family fun. Uh, you know, $100, you can take husband, wife, and, and a, a couple of kids and go have a great game. Uh, and the players are great. They interact with the fans. They sign autographs afterwards, win or lose. So it's really a, it's, it's a great experience. Now, take the experience aside on the football side. This is real football, okay? These guys are, I mean, half the size of a traditional football field, outdoor football uh, field. So we're 50 yards, half the size of in width with boards. These guys are hitting. And these guys yeah. are not, you know, these guys are coming from big colleges. Um, Miami. Well, I mean, sometimes on ESPN they'll have, uh, you know. Yeah, the they'll, have, they'll have these yeah. incredible catches, and they'll make the ESPN top ten. Yeah. Why? Because they're incredible athletes that come from, you know, Miami, South Carolina, Kentucky, University of Florida. These guys, some of them were drafted. Some of them played uh, in the NFL. So it's a great it's a great, exciting game. Gotcha. Hey, guys, we're going to go to our first commercial break here. We're talking the NBA. I've got uh, an easy question, a harder question, and an easier question. All right? First easy question. What number did Scotty Pippen wear? All right? Email edward at sportsecom101.com. The answer to that question, what number did Scotty Pippen wear? Oh, Mike, you're shaking your head, like, looking back, going, I think I know the answer. Oh, I'm not sure. I think I know. Yeah, man, <laughs> I'm right. not sure. I don't remember. Uh, I got a Scotty Pippen story ago. for you, but that's okay. All right. Stay with us. You're listening to Sports Econ 101. Don't touch that dial. We're going to be right back. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. Edward Brown here along with Mike McDowell, Russell Jackman, our special guest, Nick Furris. Tiris, excuse me. Uh, First trivia question, what number did Scotty Pippen wear? Mike, since you're, you're kind of looking back and thinking, 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 go ahead. 31, I don't remember, 31. I don't remember, oh no. All right, Russell, well, tell well, me. I will, I will say this, of all my trivia stuff, I'm not great with jersey numbers. That's just uh, across the board. I don't know, I probably only know a handful of jersey Nick numbers. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna guess fifteen and just throw that number out there. Yeah, I thought you'd know. That. I thought this was an easy no, one. No, I'm not a numbers guy. Yeah. Everyone knows twenty three. Yeah, Jordan. But yep. you know. Okay, go ahead. Thirty three. Very good. Thirty three. Wow. Yep. Wow. Okay. Well, it's All a right, good. So... It's a good thing Nick Furious is here. It is a good thing Nick Furious is here. Okay. I just watched so... that uh, documentary on ESPN the other day. Um, Good. about Chicago, you know, the Michael Jordan thing. So yeah. I saw the, 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 the last dance, <laughs> the last <laughs> dance. So that was a um, great documentary, a great I documentary, yeah. fabulously, yeah. fabulously made. Have you yeah. guys seen Clipped at all? Have you guys seen uh, the show Clipped at no. all? Which is the, no. the, the show about the uh, Clippers and Donald no, Sterling. No. Well, I'll have to report on that sometime. Hopefully, when you guys get a chance to see it, it's a lot of a lot of controversy about the casting, especially of like Steph Curry and and uh, Clay Thompson. Who you know, when you think about you know Hollywood and all the the thousands of people they can choose from for certain actors, they couldn't find two guys that look less like Steph Curry and Clay Thompson if you tried. Which is also funny because there's that one guy who impersonated. Clay Thompson. I don't know if you remember the story about a guy who pretended he looked like Clay Thompson and would show up to the games with the jersey and like people would ask him for his autograph and he got a welcome. He even went like into the locker room until someone finally noticed and said, Hey, you're not Clay Thompson. Well, and, how tight? He must have been at least close to his height, too. Then. Yeah, he was about that. He was. A, but he didn't look that much like him, but, you know, he played yeah. it up, and then people are just, you know, suckers. So, you yeah. know, I, I guess it's, but you guys didn't, you guys don't know about the show or anything like that. Yeah. So that was one of my relatables I was going to throw in there today, but I guess oh, we'll. <laughs> and then I, I wanted to also say RIP to Chet Walker, who was one of the NBA greats, 
you know, uh, uh, from from the past, and he died over the weekend. So I wanted to mention. Well, well, especially uh, you know, R.I.P. God bless the soul of uh, Nicholas. Uh, um, uh, Maravich, right? Excuse me, Josh Maravich, right. the son of Pistol Pete Maravich, died just the other day at age 42. How or why, we don't know, but it's so sad. I mean, Pistol Pete was one of the greatest basketball players of all time. His right. son gone way too soon, so uh, a sad time for the Maravich family. But, um, yeah, you know, I, 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 I maybe, maybe a congenital heart thing, because Pete died early, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So we have well, in the uh, in, this, in the Zoom studio here, Nick Huris. Uh, we're we're talking uh, not arena football. Per, I mean, it is arena football, but it's not the arena football league. It's a different league. Um, uh, tell us, Nick, is it uh, it's still is it seven player seven versus seven uh, on the field? Eight versus eight. Oh, eight, eight versus eight. Okay. And how many players on a team? Uh, I believe you can dress twenty two per game. Twenty two. Okay. So Plus, you have your practice squad. Don't quote me on that. But, no. um, but you know, Mike asked, what does it take to run a, a professional football team, an arena team? It's the same thing as any other professional sport. You have, yeah. you know, you have your coaching staff, your head coach and his staff, defensive coordinator, op, uh, offensive line coordinator, special teams, uh, trainers, practice facilities, uh, et cetera. Um, so, and then you have your front office, you have your sales, your sales staff, you have your mascot, you, there's so much that goes into producing. And I use the word producing because yes, it's, there's a football game, but then there's that producing of the experience, um, inside of that game that makes it so much fun. Um, so it's a lot of work and I think we do it. I think we're considered one of the elite franchises of indoor football uh, in the country, and we're proud of that. And what what kind of salaries uh, does a player make? The IFL uh, has a set of standards to keep parity uh, in the league, and it's working, okay? Um, I believe you can have up to seven, maybe eight veterans, and the rest, they have to be non-veteran players. Um, the veterans, there's caps. Uh, on, the other, uh, on the other players, there's caps. Um, these guys are playing for the love of the game and ultimately to get film to get to the next level. Yeah. So it's not about making a whole lot of money. That's why they're playing the game. We just had our quarterback, um, Perry, Nikosi Perry, University of Miami. He played there. He played, he played one game this year. Somebody saw him. We just sent them off to Europe, and we're very happy about that. So we want them to get to the CFL. We want them to go to the next level. Uh, so that they can get to their dream. Some of them have already been there and they come backwards to us because they don't want to give up the game. Whatever the case may be, our players are very important to ownership and the team. And I, I got to, let me just say one thing, Mike. Uh, I got to think that a lot, a lot of these players who are really gunning, for, rather than the veterans coming back to, to finish off, the, the guys who are really trying to, to show themselves for a film, et cetera, I, I would think those guys would be playing so hard. They are. Yeah. They are so hungry. They yeah. just, they love football. They want to get to the next level. And like I said, we've sent many, many a player uh, to the next level and we, we encourage it. We don't hold anybody back. We want that. We want that. Um, yeah. But somehow they always come back. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Mike. You're... Hey, Nick. Oh, gosh. Two quick questions. First of all, and you can answer this, but a lot of your players, particularly in Jacksonville and around the, the country, I've noticed, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, a lot of them seem to be very local-oriented players, some high schools even, that are good players that walked on. There seems to be a real connection to all these communities with specifically the, the um, local football players. Is that correct? There's a few that we have that are homegrown, as they say. 
There's a few uh, that are homegrown. A lot of them come from all over the country. Um, right. All of them stay. We have them housed in, in apartment complexes. So some of them, you know, if they're if they live in Jacksonville, they prefer to go home. That's fine. But I would say the majority are guys coming in from all over the country. So, um, you know, we're, we're constantly looking. We're constantly uh, signing players in the off season. Um, so there's housing them. There's feeding them. There's they're taking care of them. There's there's medical. There's rehab. All of that. It's 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 um, and it becomes a, a tight knit family. Certainly, the homegrown the homegrown kids uh, are 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 beloved in this area because. They played in this area, and then they went off to college. Uh, some of them went to uh, far away, but if they find their way back and they have the talent, we 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 welcome them. Do you have a bunch of scouts out there? Absolutely, we have we have scouts. Uh, there are agents in this league that call ours, our um, our head coach and our staff uh, send their film in. Uh, so there's a process. There's open tryouts. We've actually signed some diamonds off of open tryouts that became really good football players uh, for us. Uh, so again, it's the love of the game. It's the uh, it's the dream of going to the next level. Um, I mean, we had a player last year, Justin Renfro. I mean, he played in Seattle in the Super Bowl in Seattle. He played in Green Bay. He's a University of Miami kid. He's played in the CFL. He's played in indoor game. So he's he he he's played the gamut of all yeah. sports. Now he's our play-by-play announcer. So he stayed. He's here local, and we saw an opportunity for someone who knows the game, and he accepted. And he's doing a terrific job in the booth. And when uh, your season runs from when to when? Uh, let's see. I, I think our training camp started in. Um, in late March. So it's April through July and then playoffs championship. And the thing is because it's indoor, you, you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, playing in, in Arizona in, uh, in June. <laughs> no, and that's the great thing about it is they practice in the elements. It's hot out there, but then they, they, uh -huh. they go to the arena and it's, it's comfortable. But I'll tell you what, if you, if you ever have a chance, Look up, you know, the IFL, go IFL, your listeners, and, you know, see if there's a team near you. Experience yeah. it because every person that I have ever brought has come back and said, I'm becoming a season ticket holder. Because it's, wow. first of all, it's affordable. And second of all, it well, it's it's amazing. It's just an amazing experience. I mean, I think it, I think I, th I like some of the rules. I think it's kind of cool. You know, it, it comes off the net and you can still run it back and, uh, now, a lot of right. that's yeah. that's yeah. the difference between the old league and our league. Oh. This this year there are no nets. We, oh, gotcha. Okay, hold on, hold on a second. We got to go to our second trivia question here. What was the original name of the Los Angeles Clippers? That's our trivia question. What was the original easy, name easy, of the Los easy. Angeles Clippers? All right, stay with us. You're listening to Sports Econ 101. Don't touch that dial. We're gonna be right. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. I'm Edward Brown, along with Russell Jackman, Mike McDowell, our special guest, Nick Furis. All right. Uh, tr second trivia question on basketball. What was the original name uh, of the uh, Los Angeles Clippers? The Rockets. Uh, Mike, Mike you, you think you see? You, go ahead, Mike. What well, it looks thinking? like Russell just got it, but I, I, their, their origin, well, that's actually, we know they came from San Diego, San Diego, San Diego the Clippers. But are there, yeah, Russell, Russell, I don't know. Are there originally? There. Huh? They had Bill that? Walton on there during the early years. There used to be a team in San Diego called the San Diego Sales, part of the ABA. Now ABA, I wonder if they, yes. or, okay. I wonder if they made that transition. So, so uh, by the way, the answer is not the San Diego Clippers, which do, do you know why they got the no, I said the Rockets, that they were the Rockets. No, no it was the Buffalo Braves. Oh, did they go all the way back to being the Buffalo Braves? The Buffalo Braves went to San Diego. They changed their name to be the Clippers because they see the Clipper ships in San Diego. And, and, and did then, not, Nick will probably know this because he's from that part of the country. Did Bob, Big Bad Bob McAdoo play for them with, in Buffalo? Yes, he did. Yep. Yep. Yes, he did. 
you do, yeah? <laughs> you uh, for the next. That was a hard question. Our, our next question, I think, is a little easier. Uh, you know, we, we don't like we don't like we don't like to stump you guys too much here. Um, any more questions for Nick? Uh, uh, yes, yes, yes. Nick, Nick Pierce is our guest, uh, co-owner of the Jacksonville Sharks. Uh, I H was I F L Nick. Sorry, I F L. I F L Indoor Football, Football League. Yep. Nick, Nick, we got, we got a lot of sports leagues around America. Um, competitive baseball, obviously, going on. Where does this league, this sport, fit in? Kind of in the pantheon of, of American sports. Um, I know a few years ago, I used to watch it on NBC. It was so vibrant. Uh, you had what Danny, uh, the, the former uh, quarterback for the uh, Cowboys, um, was the head Danny coach of the Wranglers. Danny White, yeah. Uh, where where does, this, does this sport fit in, and how do you see it growing to the next level? I, I, think, I think it fits in when NFL football ends. Your football, your football cravings are, are, are st- always there, and the <clears throat> indoor game is there for you to pick up, whether it be in person, uh, going to a local arena and seeing it, or... Uh, all, all the games are, are played live on YouTube, so people can follow and watch them. And, I, I mean, there's nothing like games that come down. Our last game, last Saturday night, four seconds left on the clock. We have the ball. You have a play. You either win or you lose. So it comes down to that one last play, and we were lucky enough to to run the ball in, a two-yard run, and win the game. You have games that are going into overtime, and it, it there's I can't describe it. They're so exciting, and we were down 17, by the way, at one point midway through the third quarter. So coming back, and that's that. It's huge to come back because in arena there's a lot of scoring. Yeah. Uh, the key is to stop to stop them. Yeah. But you know the other thing is like I know you have a lot of military people that are listening to this. We have a dedicated night, July 20th this year in Jacksonville. That's Military Appreciation Night. And it's buy one, get one free. We honor our military, and it becomes an event. Um, June 22nd, we have Star Wars Night, where everybody dresses up in Star Wars outfits, and it becomes an event. So you have great football, exciting football, high-scoring football, uh, tough, hard-hitting football, with all of this other pageantry around it. And like I said, it's it's family oriented, it's fun. And um, I, this league, to answer your question more specifically, a television deal, I know our, our, our IFL championship will be on CBS, on CBS uh, Sports this year, as it was last year out of Las Vegas. I think a television deal will definitely help. Television helps expand it um, immediately, and I think the, the commissioner and the league is working on that. So I think in time it will become more of a what the AFL was what was on ESPN. I was thinking about that before the NFL, yeah. right? Major. But the problem what was the with the AFL, if I may, Ed, was you asked the question salaries. They outpriced themselves. You cannot mm-hmm. be paying somebody. $200,000 a year or all these players, all this money, when you're only charging, you know, your average ticket is, you know, $25, $30. You, yeah. It just doesn't match. So the right way is to build it the right way and give the fans what they want, a great experience and an affordable price. Get a TV deal so that that money can then trickle back down and then we can bring in more talent at higher pay scale. Nick, the key question. I've talked to you actually once where take us behind the scenes because I think, you know, you talk about the hard work, all the different elements that go into being a, a franchise. Can you give us some insight of things that, I mean, behind the scenes, what don't we know? That's A. And then B, is there a story that just, hey, this is why we do what we do? Okay, I'll answer I'll, I'll answer your second question first because it's just happening, and it just happened this year. Um, 
the sharks we have we created a 501c nonprofit um we go out into the community into schools our players go with the head coach we teach leadership we talk about bullying we do all of those important things at the same time there is a a local kid that came to our attention that's 11 years old that's battling leukemia mm. and this kid has is going through and the family and the parents and his siblings are are going through such a terrible time well we made sure we brought that kid in in his window where he could be out and amongst mm. people and we made sure he was in the locker room we made sure he broke the team down in the locker room he came out was introduced in front of the crowd and has no problem they're very they're very um um public about what he's going through and to have 8000 people just clapping and saying your name and that just raised his spirits that's why we do what we do okay awesome. number 2 behind the scenes look it's like everything else you have a football staff you have a coach that's looking at film you have you you're looking for free agents you're doing all those football things you're in team meetings you're you're at practice you're weightlifting you're rehabbing all of those things at the same time you have a sponsorship team that's out looking for sponsors for the games you have a team that is uh dedicated to uh ticket sales you have uh a, an attack dance team that is entertaining and 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 putting on performances that just doesn't happen by magic there's a whole front office this is an everyday thing we're away this week in green bay our team is working right now preparing for our star our star wars night on the 22nd what's a, what's a team worth uh, average team worth now it depends, Maybe. I think, what market you're in, how, how long you've been. Um, I, 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 well, let's I, rather, I, I, okay. I think, I think, I think anything is worth what someone wants to pay for well, it. Well, sure. Okay, let's put it this way: How much would it cost if someone said, "Hey, I'd like to start a team"? Okay, you can go to goifl dot uh, goifl dot com. There's a <laughs> registration. There's fees involved, X amount of dollars, because think about it. You got to buy turf. You got to buy boards. You got to buy dashers for the boards. You got to buy equipment. Depending on the league, you got to buy nets. You got to buy helmets. You got to you got to create merchandise. It, it's not cheap. Oh, it's I, not I, cheap. I know. That, that's what I was going to say. I mean, just, can you give us a rough? I don't have time to go on the, while we're on the show. Just uh, I, like, I, I would say, I, I mean, to get in the league, you you're going to need. I'm going to guess to start ground level and build a team, you'll need a million dollars. Oh, that's that's actually pretty cheap. It to, is. To, to uh, there's that it might be more, you know, yeah. when you start thinking about it, but you offset it with things, but you're not buying a team for a hundred thousand dollars. It's just not happening. No, oh, no, no, no. I mean it's just the player salaries and having to put them up. Right. But yeah. I think there are some teams that are worth much more than a million dollars. Yeah. Uh you've got You've got arenas filled in Arizona, Jacksonville, uh, Green Bay, you know, nine, 10,000 fans. And well, it takes time. Do you guys go into market? I, I would think also if you go into markets where there's not football, you know, professional football. Well, like, I mean, you know what? I would think that um, what happens is the league looks at it demographically. It makes yeah. smart decisions. It wants to see if there was a previous team somewhere and they had the support. They're not going to go to an area where there is no support or you can't get you. First of all, you got to find just the right arena that, you know, you can't have, you got to find the right arena that has X amount of seats that makes economic sense. You can't have one that's only 2000 seats. That's not going to work. Well, so yeah. it was, it was, there's it was, a whole lot. There's a whole lot of R and D research and development that goes into picking a market. I will, I can tell you where we're going to be next year. I know one of the teams it's been put out there publicly and it's Indianapolis. So oh, Indianapolis okay. will be a new market. You know, it's interesting because like, I think about the Tampa Bay devil rays, right. And it's like, they, they hardly ever draw 
even though you know they a lot of times they put together really good teams, but it's just like a market that just struggles to, to get and professional. Tam- but Tampa, Tampa as a market used to have a very very successful arena football franchise. So we never know. There may be another one in Florida. We hope so. All right, Mike, go ahead. A quick question, and it gets super quick. Uh, I, I my first job in broadcasting was in Prescott, Arizona. Lo and behold, I find out there was an actual arena football league in Prescott, Arizona. Uh, quickly, are they still around? And where's the most unique city in America that you just, I think, first of all, I think that town may, is right up there. Um, some pretty interesting towns these teams are in. Well, there's two teams in Arizona this year. Uh, California has a bunch of teams. Uh Sioux City, Iowa, Sioux City. Uh, I think there's one in South Dakota, if I'm not mistaken. I'd have to look. Right. There's so I many teams right. I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, listen, uh, Green Bay is a great market. Uh, guys go up there. You know, you've got you got the aura of Vince Lombardi and Lambeau oh. Field as your backdrop. Look at Jacksonville. Jacksonville, would Jacksonville be considered a market? Well, yeah. I mean, the NFL thought it was good enough to to bring a team here, and it it happened to work in 2010 when we brought when they brought the team here. So, uh, I think I think uh, in the end, we'll grow, we'll grow smart, and it'll become the popular sport that it deserves to be. Very good. Okay, guys, we're going to go to our third commercial uh, trivia question here, and. I, I, I'll, I'll see if you guys need a hint, but what town in Indiana did Larry Bird come from, and what was his nickname? Mm-hmm. I got you this know, one. I, yeah, I, 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 right. just, okay, I don't need to give you that. That, that, that one was the easier out of all that. That was the easiest one. Okay, kind of oh, Russell's got it, too, I'm sure. All right, but, but the thing is, I want to find out if you guys know his nickname, though. Okay, all right. Stay with us. You're listening to Sports Econ 101. We'll be right back with some closing comments and our famous stocks for the day. Don't touch that dial. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. Last time for today, I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Mike McDowell, Russell Jackman, our special guest, Nick Furis, which, by the way, Nick, thank you very much for uh, being our guest at Jacksonville Sharks Indoor Football Arena. Uh, here's our trivia question. What town in Indiana did Larry Bird come from? Go ahead, Mike. Well, I, I'm, Fred Russell, correct me if I'm wrong, but his nickname was the Hick from French Lick. Perfect. That's right. You got the, you got the second part of the uh, of the question. And it's of course, much it's a no-brainer. It's easy. That's an easy I one. Mean, Do you Larry, remember Larry Bird's, you know, he's the man. That's all I got to say. Do you remember? Uh, Do you remember? Uh, Cheers. Five yeah. seconds. I, yeah. I had a chance to interview him in the locker room. I was covering the war. Ma- Magic Johnson was next to me. Uh, Bill Walton was just near near me as well. And then I see Larry Bird in his bomber jacket. He's sitting there in the Celtics locker room. I want to go up to him. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I can't, man. It's Larry. It's Larry. Yeah. I was just in absolute awe of the guy. I'm like, I just, it was like the moment was perfect. I didn't even need to talk to him. I just got to see him. Yeah. I got to tell you. <laughs> Remember, vase is just people like everybody else. <laughs> He's having to stand out. Okay, are you guys ready for our thoughts for the day? <clears throat> so Carrie Fisher, remember her from uh, Star Wars, right? She said, instant gratification takes too long. <laughs> I like that. It's pretty good. And uh, Will Farrell said, before you marry a person, you should first make them use a computer with slow internet to see who they really are. <laughs> Word to the wise, yes. Again, Nick Furis, thank you so much for uh, joining us. It was very interesting uh, to learn about the uh, indoor football uh, arena. Uh, indoor, indoor, indoor football, football league, league, yes. Which is, which is uh, arena football, basically. Yep. Uh, appreciate that. And uh, tune in, audience, tune in next week to Sports Econ 101. We're going to be discussing sports topics from a business perspective and asking more sports trivia questions. Thanks for listening. On behalf of our team, I'm your host, Edward Brown. We'll see you next week. Adios. Thank you, military. So long. <laughs>